Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I would like to follow up on a video that I did a month and a half ago. It's titled, I am a New York City business owner and I will not follow Mayor de Blasio's order. In that video, I drew my line in the sand that I admittedly should have drawn far earlier and I said that I am not going to discriminate on who can enter my business based on their COVID vaccination status. I am not going to tell Kevin or Steve or Anel or anybody at the front of the store, you need to check people's vaccination card. And if they don't have it, you got to tell them, sorry, go to the Apple store. That's just, that's not something that we're doing here. That's not uh, my business. And it's not something that I intend to get involved in. Admittedly, there are many things that should have caused me to draw a line in the sand far earlier and speak out publicly about things that honestly were just way before even COVID started. And I didn't. And first, I can't explain why this was the area where I drew my line in the sand. It may seem weird to people because I got vaccinated and I see no problem with getting vaccinated and I encourage people to. But for this just was where I drew my line in the sand with, uh, with the city of New York, uh, just doing things to aggravate and piss off small business owners. And I wanted to talk about a little bit about how this is unfolding. So there was a little piece of news here today. It says... BLM organizer says BL, the de Blasio vaccine mandate weaponized against black community. The co-founder of New York's Black Lives Matter chapter said New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio's citywide vaccination mandate is targeting the black community and creating conditions akin to segregation. 72% of black people in the city from ages 18 to 44 are unvaccinated, Shavona Newsom said during a Monday protest in New York City. Also, my apologies if I mispronounced your name. So what is going to stop the Gestapo, I mean the NYPD, from rounding up black people, from snatching them off the train, off the bus? Newsom warned that her group could respond with an uprising similar to the ones that followed the death of George Floyd in the summer of 2020. We're putting the city on notice that your mandate will not be another racist social distance practice. Black people are not going to stand by or you will see another uprising. And that is not a threat. That is a promise, she said. The vaccination passport is not a free passport to racism. Kimberly Bernard, the co-founder of the Black Women's March, made a similar claim that COVID-19 mandates are being used to target black people and other minorities. We are serving notice on the mayor, on the governor, on the restaurant industry that we will not allow for you to use this pandemic vaccination cards and masks as another reason to be racist, to put us in prison because there's enough of us in there, Bernard said. This is just one of many reasons that I am not complying with this order. One of many. This is going to be an absolute mess. Having not the city, not even the police, but people who work at small businesses, the receptionist, the barista, uh, be the one that is ask, is allowing people into a restaurant or a bar or a store based on their vaccination status. And even though this order is only for restaurants, bars, and gyms, and I think Broadway at this point in time, even though it doesn't affect laptop repair stores, I, I can see where this is going. And I just wanted to make my line very clear that this is not something that I am going to be doing. Now, when it comes to racism, I see three different definitions of racism, depending on who you ask. The first type is explicit racism, a sign that says Irish and Jews need not apply, a separate bathroom for black people and white people, a sign that says we don't hire, you know, racial epithet, insert racial epithet here. The second type of racism is racism where the law or the, the mandate in and of itself is not racist. There is no race written into it, but it had racist intent. So the person who came up with that piece of legislation specifically did it with the intent of knowing it would screw with this minority group or that minority group. So that is racist intent. The third type of racism I hear discussed is disparate impact. This is something you hear discussed in Thomas Sowell's uh, What's the book? It's uh, Discrimination and Disparities. Disparate impact, where you have a policy or a law that affects different groups differently. And the person who created that piece of legislation may have had no ill will in their heart, no malintention whatsoever. They may not be racist in any way, but the law or the mandate they put in place has a disparate impact on this group versus that group. And that is typically a definition of racism that appears to be reserved for people who are more to my political left or people who tend to be more progressive. To be clear on my stance, I don't believe that this would be racism number one or two. I don't believe this would be racism where it's explicit, where it says you must check the vaccine passport if a minority enters your establishment, but not if a white person enters. And I don't think it's racism of of intent where I, I don't believe that in his heart of hearts, as stupid as and mean as Mill de Blasio is, I don't believe he thought, 
let's screw with minorities, let's do a vaccine mandate. I think that what he wants to do is he wants to do everything he can to get people to feel comfortable going back to work, to get people to get things going back to normal, and to not have waves of COVID screwing with hospitals in a city that has some of the highest population density in the United States. I think that was his intention. I don't believe that Bill de Blasio had a racist intent. But he is an idiot. And I think that's a big part of why he did not foresee any of this being a problem when he issued this mandate. So I find it interesting when you have a policy that in a very, very progressive city that just had a year of protests of um, this is just this is it's it's, it's kind of like it's it's uh, they, just, they never learn. They never learn. So you have a year of protests on this very issue of, you know, let, let's involve law enforcement less in menial things. And we come up with a, a, a mandate that is going to have a giant disparate impact on one particular group of the population. Now, while there may be a number of reasons deep-rooted as to why certain groups have less trust for government or less trust for the medical community than other groups, and those may be understandable, when it comes to specifically the logistics of it, the implementation of the vaccine is done in a manner where regardless of your group or your ethnicity, it, it throughout New York City, you can get this vaccine pretty much anywhere. It's not like it's just reserved for a couple of people on Park Avenue. Throughout Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, Bronx, and Staten Island, you're able to get access to a vaccine whether you live in a poor neighborhood or a rich neighborhood, regardless of the ethnicity or the makeup of your neighborhood. And the vaccine has also been made available for free. So even if you're on a lower socioeconomic rung or you're a member of a particular group that happens to be lower income, this is not a reason to not get it. Uh, and also, yes, I understand that free means taxpayer funded, not actually free before somebody goes full pedantic with me. But this is not something that was implemented in a way where it, we made it 10 times harder for this group to get the vaccine than that group. It, it's pretty much available to anybody who wants to get it. So we really don't have a case where it's more difficult to get a vaccine if you live in Bed-Stuy than it is if you live in Clinton Hill kind of thing. Uh, and what I find to be interesting here is just a lack of, I don't know, it's, it's going to be very interesting and admittedly a, a popcorn crunching experience to watch what unfolds. Because anybody who looked at the vaccination rates would be able to tell that this is probably a really fucking bad idea in something that's going to end in a lot of conflict, a lot of aggravation, and a lot of misery. Which is one of the many reasons that I want no part of it. So I got my vaccine. I got COVID and beat it. If you come near me and you're not vaccinated, I don't particularly care. Uh, and neither do the people that, that work here. Um, so we're not asking people whether or not they're vaccinated in order to enter our business. So when I sit here and I read an article that says, or you will see another uprising, and that is not a threat, that is a promise based on this mandate and the disparate rates of vaccination. I mean, this is not something that anybody who's been paying attention in any way, shape or form would be surprised what happened when this type of law came out. And yet it came out anyway. Good job, New York City. Good job. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. And let me know, if you have a small business, would you follow this type of order? Did you have a vaccine mandate in place for your customers before this order came out? If so, why? If you don't, why not? If the state mandated that you have this type of order put in place, or the city mandated that this type of order be put in place at your business, what would you do? How would you handle it? Would you enforce it? And what would you do if somebody came in to inspect you to see if you were enforcing it and you were not? I'm very curious. Let me know in the comments down below. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.